now we are going to discuss about the absorption of the carbohydrate so the transport of glucose and galactose both depend upon the sodium in the intestinal lumen this is the luminal part okay and this is the cytosol so glucose and galactose transports depend on the sodium concentration inside the intestinal lumen if so uh, a high concentration of sodium high concentration of sodium on the mucosal surface of the cells will facilitate the sugar influx in inside the cytosol okay and low concentration of sodium inhibits sugar influx if sodium is more in amount in luminal side then glucose and galactose will transport more inside the cell and if its concentration is low then glucose and galactose transport inside the intro side will decrease why this is happening because glucose uh, sugar glucose and galactose and sodium uses the same co transporter okay this is the co transporter same co transporter for their transport that is known as sodium dependent glucose transporter 1 okay sodium dependent glucose transporter 1 is present in the intestine whereas sodium dependent glucose transporter 2 is present inside the renal tubules okay so now so glucose and galactose enter enterocytes via sodium linked sodium linked secondary active transports now coming to the transport of fructose fructose is basically transported inside the enterocyte by glut 5 okay and this is known as glucose transporter 5 and this is responsible for the facilitated diffusion that is a type of passive transport okay there will be no energy required to transport fructose inside the cytosol so fructose transport is sodium independent also because it not does not required sodium sodium is required by glucose and galactose for their transport clear so this is all about the absorption of uh, glucose and galactose uh, from the intestinal lumen to the cytosol of the enterocyte